Organized religion was also a segregated institution. This might have actually been a plus for black Americans since it would be their own rock solid religious faith rather than religion generally that would sustain them, many of them, through the tough movement years that were soon to come, just as it has fortified them through 350 years of slavery and persecution. But lack religion, which in the South came almost exclusively in Baptist and Methodist flavors, was far more joyous, emotional, and political than the white variety. And in the movement, it was much more attuned to dealing with real-world problems such as how to transport several thousands of people a day during a boy bus boycott, or how to get a hundred children out of jail by nightfall, or how to get 200 potential demonstrators together to give them the details of the planned protest and the spirit and courage to undertake it. At the beginning of the movement years, however, the religion of the Black South also contributed to retarding Negroes' appetite for challenging and changing the status quo. Black ministers, who rightly saw little advantage in promising immediate change to their congregations, were wont to preach instead that better times would come, but the time it would be by and by. When everybody died and gathered up in heaven, that was when there would be equality, and the yard boys, boys and housemaids who had suffered for so many years would finally achieve the glory they so pro profoundly deserved. There was also the understanding that simultaneously their white tormentors might as well be roasted in hell, although black religion has always been reluctant to speak out publicly about revenge. Race, creed, color, or national origin. There had been no discrimination in employment. The conditions of the American Negro would have been remarkably different. As it was, the nation maintained two distinct systems, one for whites and a handful of Negroes who somehow managed to overcome the manifold obstacles, and another for the rest of the blacks. This scheme was crystal clear in its oper operation in the South, somewhat less so in the rest of the nation. The two systems were not separate as the South schools were. Whites and blacks could work under the same roof and sometimes even eat their lunch at the same table, but they certainly were not equal. Equal employment would have hastened the end of the economic subjugation that was such an important part of the Southern system, and it would, it would have cost Southern whites, both individual and corporate, a great deal of money. Grown men called yard boys to ensure that their self-esteem did not go out of hand, get out of hand, were paid a few dollars a week to perform a laborious work, the laborious work of maintaining the white family's gardens, lawns, and houses. Inside the house, their wives were paid another few dollars, plus care, car fare, to get them to and from their side of town via segregated bus, or rearing the white children and cooking their meals, scrubbing their floors, and washing their tables. Even the most ardent white humanitarians were unwilling to bypass a bargain like this, despite the obvious similarities between this system and the one that it prevailed during the days of slavery.